The Canon M6 Mark II and the Sony a6400 have so many similarities, like the fact that they are both crop censored cameras, they both have flip up screens, clean HDMI for live streaming, they shoot 4K up to 30 frames per second, great autofocus, mic jack input, and to make it even harder, they're only a $100 difference in price. And so in this video, we'll be breaking down the differences between these two cameras to find which one is best for you. So let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what's up? It's Omar Takori with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. And on this channel, sometimes we do tech gear reviews, YouTube strategy tip videos, as well as camera comparison videos just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now to lay some ground rules when it comes to these cameras, we'll be comparing them all using the kit lens that you would get. The price for the a6400 with the kit lens is $998 at the time of shooting this video. And the M6 Mark II with the kit lens is $1099. So they're very close in price. The first thing we're gonna talk about is image quality. And so this is just kind of like your video look straight out of camera. This is like how it'll look straight out of the box. And though these both shoot in the same frame rates in 4K at 24 frames and 30 frames a second, I think the Sony is superior in 4K when compared to the M6 Mark II. And you might not even be able to see too much of a difference, but I think just in sharpness a little bit, uh, and that is in 4K. Now it is important to note that when you start to drop down to 1080, so let's say you're gonna start shooting slow motion, like 60 frames per second, the actual 1080 quality of the Sony a6400 is not that great. But the M6 Mark II looks way better in 1080, and that's just something to note when in regards to image quality that, you know, if you need to drop to 1080 to live stream, because these both have clean HDMIs, uh, you're gonna have a better quality 1080 out of the M6 Mark II than the a6400. You're kind of getting uh, you know, more range of image quality out of the M6 Mark II. And so that's just something to note. If you plan on live streaming with any of these cameras, uh, personally, I would go with the M6 Mark II because of that. Another thing to definitely talk about when we talk image quality are the colors straight out of camera. Like what are you getting when you open up the box, you turn on the camera and hit record, uh, you're gonna get a lot better colors and skin tones out of the M6 Mark II. The Sony a6400's colors straight out of camera aren't terrible. I think they're that looks great, but when you compare it side by side, I feel like I lean toward the M6 Mark II's colors, but you can tweak your picture profiles in your Sony. I just think, you know, that's not a beginner's thing, and I'm always thinking about the beginner. This is probably gonna be your first or second camera and you know you may not care about picture profiles, you just want a good camera that shoots great, and that would go to the M6 Mark II in regards to image quality. Another thing you wanna consider when picking up one of these cameras are the lens options you have to upgrade in the future, or maybe you wanna do photography with these lenses, or you wanna level up the, the lens in and of itself. I would actually have to give that to the Sony as you know Tamron and Sigma and Sony has even. They've heavily invested in creating lenses for the Sony cameras, specifically the crop sensored cameras. But if you didn't know this, all of Sony's lenses go with all of Sony's cameras. I don't know why that's not the case with Canon, but as far as lens options go, for the most part, most people don't need a ton of lenses. Most people need the lens that they need for the type of content they're creating. And so with that being said, basic YouTube video, talking head, or live stream, uh, you can probably get something like the Sigma 16 millimeter lens, which is made for both of these cameras. And so you can you know, achieve that nice blurry background at about a arm's length distance with both of these cameras. But nonetheless, the Sony a6400 wins when it comes to lens option. The next thing I wanna talk about are user experience. I think it's important to note that the Canon just does a good job at um, you know attracting beginners because there's a beginner's mode. So what's nice about having a beginner's mode is just to get started, it'll guide you through the settings that you may want to change or they'll change for you, which is cool. Whereas the Sony and their menu system, a lot of people aren't a fan of. Obviously with some use, you can get more proficient at it, but there's something to say about Sony's ability to be able to customize buttons. If you want to you know, speed your workflow for any reason or do, or do anything differently with how the camera's set up, you have a little bit more of customization when it comes to making this camera yours, the a6400. The M6 Mark II has two dials at the top of the camera, which is nice to have in the front and in the rear when it comes to changing your shutter speed or your aperture. 
In regards to how they just generally look, I definitely think the M6 Mark II looks cooler. It looks like a vintage rangefinder film camera type thing, especially if you get the two-tone with the silver on the top. Not to say anything bad about the A6400. That's just, I mean, as far as vibes go, I mean, this is much more of a vibe uh, when it comes to how it looks physically. Now, um, because these both have flip up screens and if you plan on vlogging or if you plan on putting a shotgun microphone on top of these cameras, you're going to obstruct your view to be able to see yourself. And so you can inexpensively invest into a solution that moves the cold shoe mount off to the side or at the bottom, therefore not really getting in the way. Uh, but you'll have to do that with either one of these. So the next thing is picture quality. Now, if you are a general content creator, you're, you will be taking photos, whether that be thumbnails or photos for Instagram or what have you. It is important to note that the Sony a6400 has a 24 megapixel uh, sensor. However, the M6 Mark II has 32 megapixels for its sensor, which is actually really on the high side, which I think is awesome. A higher megapixel camera yields a better picture taken uh, when all your settings are dialed in. So the M6 Mark II for photography definitely wins in that arena. The next thing I wanna talk about is stabilization. The M6 Mark II has digital image stabilization that you could turn on and it has three different levels, which is nice. Unfortunately, the Sony a6400 doesn't have any kind of image stabilization. The only other Sony's in this body style that have image stabilization or IBIS in body image stabilization are the Sony a6500 and the Sony a6600, which is a lot more than the a6400 and the a6500 doesn't have a flip up screen. All that to say, when it comes to image stabilization, the M6 Mark II wins because it just has that feature and you can always pair a lens that has some IS built into it, something that's gonna help with some jitter, but just important to note that unless you're using a super wide lens when you vlog, you will see a lot of jitters with the a6400, whereas the M6 Mark II will look a little bit better. Now, if you're getting value in this video, let me know by hitting that like button and let me know which camera you're kind of leaning toward as we've gone through a lot of these things. This next portion, I kind of want to talk about like little things that are different um, and don't really fall into a major category. So that we can call this miscellaneous differences, I guess you could say. But uh, something to note definitely has to go with the Sony a6400 having no record limit. And so not all that many cameras on the market at this price point can you get with no record limit. And so as long as your you know, SD card can handle and as much as your battery can handle, you can record for as long as you want. Now the M6 Mark II, however, just shoots at 30 minutes, which is pretty standard. And uh, if you don't plan on exceeding the 30 minute threshold, uh, then that's okay. Then you can go with the M6 Mark II. Uh, I know a lot of people talk about battery life and this and that, they both, aren't that awesome at battery. Like if you if you had a fully charged battery, you probably just get around an hour or so of continuous recording, uh, which is not that much. However, you can always buy an adapter that'll give you forever battery life. Battery life is no longer an issue because you spent 20 bucks and you bought a battery adapter that gives you juice forever. So that's cool to know. And I don't wanna really you know deem any of these bad for that reason. So taking all those differences into consideration when it comes to these two cameras, which one should you buy? I think it'd be the quintessential thing for me to say, man, they're both great. I mean, anyone could do great things with both cameras. But I'm gonna just be straight up. I think the better camera uh, between these two has to be the Canon M6 Mark II. And I say that for a lot of reasons. Let me say the first reason is that it is better for beginners. More and more people are gonna be entering the creator space, are gonna be content creators. And I think having a good beginner's camera straight out of the box is fair and reasonable. Like you should buy a beginner friendly camera. Whereas the A6400 could be a lot more of a learning curve to use because of the menu system and the things like that. The second reason is because uh, image quality straight out of camera. I think what's so good about just having good colors without having to learn about color grading, you don't need to learn about color grading if you're starting out or even if you aren't starting out. Like Canon colors in this camera are phenomenal. Um, I also think the ability to live stream because the 1080 is better than the 6400. I'm team crispy, drippy crispy. And so I want crispy live streams. And so the M6 Mark II is gonna give you that as well. I know I mentioned earlier in the video that the A6400 wins in the lens department because of the options of native lenses. Now the life hack is buying an adapter 
for the M6 Mark II, like the Viltrox adapter, it's about $150, and it opens up your world to the Canon EF mount lenses, which you can find phenomenal deals on, and you can also level up the quality of video and the way your video looks with that adapter. And it actually, it kind of turns it into a full frame also. So that's a nice little life hack that you can get when, when investing in the M6 Mark II. I would say the only person that I would recommend getting the Sony a6400 is someone who needs that unlimited record limit. So maybe you're in church space and you need to record a long form, uh, you know, talking head videos, or you are shooting educational content or recitals and things like that. The a6400 would be a great camera for that because of that no record limit. But really other than that, the M6 Mark II takes the cake. And if you didn't know this, the best selling camera with interchangeable lenses is the Canon M50. And you wanna know what's crazy about the Canon M50? Its biggest flaw is that the 4K is not usable. You know what camera has a usable 4K? The M6 Mark II, and it has great autofocus in 4K. And so a lot of people don't talk about the M6 Mark II, but it really is what the M50 Mark II should have been in regards to the features it has. And so this camera was ahead of its time when it was released. It's been out for a little bit longer now, but nonetheless, better camera than the a6400. In my opinion, I'm entitled to my own opinion, but let me know down in the comments which camera you think is better, which one you think you'll go with. And again, whatever cameras you want me to compare against each other, would love your recommendation and I'd love to make those videos. If you wanna check out another camera comparison video, you can do so by clicking or tapping the screen. And I can't wait to see you in a future one. Peace. Yeah.